All right, so this is one device that I have recently constructed. What it is is a series of these asymmetrical capacitors on this rotor here, which turns quite easily, but maybe not easily enough. I don't know. Um, so in here, you, you can see the uh, curved electrode here. And then down here is just a single wire electrode. So that should give it a, a converging electric field. Um, so it's like, kind of like a, uh, an umbrella shape capacitor. And um, there's a brush over here, brush on the, uh, not really a brush on the bottom, but anyways, so it charges up through these wires here and then through the outside here. Uh, so another thing too I've been messing around with a lot is is the uh, high voltage uh, charging and discharging and it appears that there was in some of my experiments there was a an impulse effect where it seemed like it was the body was being repelled away with every spark discharge See that? And a piece of bismuth thirty six. This is the lead weight. It's 284 grams. I'll do a few. Uh, um, experiments with that as well. So here I'm testing uh, some of the principles that T.T. Uh, Brown uh, talked about in his patent. With the uh, converging electric fields. And so we also have the advantage of the uh, discharging effect or the discharging as well in this setup to see if there's any sort of uh, extra impulses or, or forces developed. So the idea is that this thing is going to rotate this way. Uh, so what I have here with the generator is probably based on the 30 kilovolts per centimeter of dielectric strength of the air, probably uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 60,000 volts developing across here. So let me just get started here. Cranking it up and seeing what happens. So I'm going to start with, uh, there's some there's some weaknesses in this design. Uh, so there's some arc overs that happen here uh, when it gets to high enough voltage. So that's a, that's a downside of this. Some of the features of what I made here but I should be able to get up to about um, yeah so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna be able to get a very high steady state voltage with this so what I'm going to do is do spark discharging. That's jumping about here. You 
you can see the flashovers here. So that's probably somewhere, something like 40, 30, 40 KB in that neighborhood. And this dielectric powder in here is mostly titanium dioxide. So far, I'm not not seeing any uh, any motion here. I'll leave that one for now. And just a quick test here with a source of uh, high frequency, high voltage. Here. I will demonstrate that. So now it's hooked up to the, uh, the central part here, coming through these wires into the wire electrodes going to the dielectric. So I thought maybe, eh, Maybe it might do something. High frequency, high voltage. So you can see a little, little arcing there, plasma arcs. Nope. No motion. So my thoughts around that were that because the electric field would be going into the dielectric more, it would be asymmetrical. And so if there's any uh, effect to do with to do with that, um, the energy going in one direction, uh, creating possibly creating a thrust, a force. But who knows? Maybe with uh, a much better coil. 100,000 volts, 200,000 200, volts, don't know. Always pushing away from here when there's a discharge. So this is uh, a different test tube with cobalt oxide powder in it. it. Seems to perform a little better actually. Okay, this is the same, just now a different test tube with manganese dioxide powder in it. 